what is meteorology? Okay. Meteorology is the study of things high up in the air. Okay. And there are two Greek words associated with that. Logi is the part that is the study of. And then, of course, you have the other word, which means things way up in the air. And that's, of course, where you get the word meteor from, okay? Because meteors are way up in the air until they come crashing to Earth and they make a mess, okay? Now, there are a few things you have to keep in mind. And I'm not going to go very in-depth with this. I'm going to go in-depth with this in another video, but in this particular one, I'm going to give you some of the basics. When air expands, it gets cooler. But when it contracts, it gets hotter. That's why when you have a piston and an engine, if you compress the air, it gets hot enough to make an explosion, which, of course, we're talking like a micro explosion, not a big explosion. And that explosion then sends the piston back down. Okay? You compress the air, it gets hot, it gets hot enough, it goes kaboom, and it sends the piston right back down. That's how pistons work. Okay? Now, you also have to keep in mind that our atmosphere is held to the Earth by gravity. Okay? So that's why you'll find less atmosphere at higher levels than you will at lower levels. You go to sea level, you're going to find heavy air. If you go up on a mountain, you're going to find a less heavy air. That's just a fact. Okay. Now, hot air rises. Cold air falls. That's why they tell you in fires that if you are in a fire to get down on the ground because there are cooler pockets of air below the big fire. The fire heat will go up and therefore you'll be a little safer on the bottom. At least for a while. But I wouldn't stick around if I were you. I'd get out of there as quick as I could. All right. Now, we have something on this earth called barometric pressure. Now, how do you find the barometric pressure? Well, what you do is you have isobars. And isobars are basically lines of same barometric pressure. So, let's say you have two towns. They're not too far apart. So, you go to the one town and you find a certain barometric pressure. You go about 15 miles south and you still find the same barometric pressure. So, you draw a line between the two towns. As they say, the line between the two towns shows a line of equal barometric pressure. And that's what you see drawn on weather maps. Now the thing is that when those lines of barometric pressure get closer and closer together, they start generating winds. And so the closer those barometric pressure lines get, the higher your wind speed's going to be. The farther away they are, the less wind you'll have. Now, that's where you get high pressure and low pressure. Okay? At the center of a low pressure is the lowest barometric pressure of that low pressure system. That's why they say when you get close to the eye of the hurricane, you're going to find a lower barometric pressure. Okay? And that's why when a high front moves through, when you hit the highest part, some people have headaches because the high pressure gives them a headache. All right, now it's this clash of high and low pressure that starts creating a lot of wind and causes a lot of storms to form. Remember that when moisture, when it's in a gaseous state, starts rising up in the atmosphere, it starts to cool down. And then it gets to surrounding little particles up in the air, and that's what makes your clouds, and eventually that's what makes rain. Now you get some wind in this, okay? And the wind's blowing that rain back up in the atmosphere. That rain is going to start combining with itself, eventually forming ice. In the wintertime, that forms snow. In the summertime, that can actually form hail. And that's how you get hailstones. Alright? And... Now you're beginning to see how wind is created, how the atmosphere is created, why we have lower pressures at sea level than we do over there in the mountains, so on and so forth. Now, 
when you have a big dome of cold air coming against a big dome of hot air, you're going to have a lot of friction and that's what creates your storms. And that friction between the air masses, that friction between the air masses, that's what starts creating the electricity needed for lightning. Okay? It's also what starts creating your little thunderstorms which creates your little tornadoes or even your hurricanes. So it's all these key factors that come together that makes your weather the way it is. Now I know there's a lot of other things that factor into this. You also have a jet stream in which goes across the northern hemisphere of our planet. There's also a jet stream in the southern hemisphere. And that directs a lot of our low and high pressure systems. But this is just a beginner's thing. I will tell you a lot more in the next video, so stay tuned.